Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we wired up our labels to our variables so we could see them get updated when the variables changed. In this lecture, we're going to see how we can wire up our buttons so we can actually call a state and modify those variables. So it'll, we'll actually start beginning to see the working pieces of this game. So um, I'm right clicking here just to drag this over so we can see a little better. Let's, uh, we can just pick any of these to start with, any three of these. I'm going to start with the bag because uh, that's going to give us money. And um, what we're going to be wanting to do is when we click this button, we're obviously going to add $1 to our money for the bagging. And then we're going to take away a little bit of health and a little bit of food. So those are the updates we're going to make to our variables. And uh, we can begin by clicking here on our game manager and we have our update UI here now in this state machine we now need to create an event so we can capture the fact that we've clicked the button so we can do that by coming over here to events and I'm just gonna come down here and say click button as our event and I can come up in here and add a state to our state machine and this is where we're going to process the button. So I'm going to say process button click. And we can now add this event and wire it up to our state by right clicking. And under here, under add global transition, choose click button. And now you'll see that we have, in addition to our start event that will update our UI, we have a click button event that then we can put actions in here to process our button click. So let's go ahead and wire up the button because we can watch and see that this button calls this event just by observing the uh, state machine while the game's running. So to wire up this button and call this event, we can click in on our bag number, uh, our bag dollar sign button here in the scene, or we can come over here into the hierarchy over here and click on the button. And over here on the right, in our button script component, you're going to see an on click down here when it says the list is empty because we haven't set up any events to call yet for this button. I can click this little plus sign to add to the list, and you'll see that right here it has a placeholder here to grab an object. You notice it says none there right now. So all we have to do now is pick up our game manager here and drag it over and drop it in and at this point our game manager is wired up to our button and here in our game manager we have our click button event that we need to call if I click back on our beg for a money button we can come down here under no function and find our playmaker FSM and there's a lot of different options here. The one we're concerned about is the send event because we want to send an event to this game manager and say that we want to process the button click. So we're going to say click button. And so this click button here needs to match the event that we set up here. And it knows to call this because we have actually specified inside of our click that we want to, to operate on that specific object. So let's go ahead and click on our game manager so we can observe it here and we're going to click our run button up at the top and notice how when we started it went into the UI state, update UI state and now when I click the bag for a dollar notice how it fired off over here and we can just verify that it is because we wired it up to this button if we if we click this button or this button notice how it just stays in this update UI state it's not going to move over there but as soon as I hit beg for a dollar now we're processing our button click so let's go ahead and put in here what we want to have happen in our action and actually modify our variables so to do this we can come down here to our action browser and we'll say add and when we typed add it filtered everything in our list here to just the actions that include add and it so happens that the one we want here is on the top it's because I've used it recently int add 
and you, you will find it down here lower if you haven't used it before in the math section. Just double click it and now it adds it as an action here in our state. Now you're going to see here that we have our day, our food, our health, and our money. Well let's just pick money and we know we want to add a dollar so we can just hit the add one there like that and let's go ahead and then handle taking a little away from the health and the food so we can click here and say copy selected actions and then right click and say paste and that way we don't have to look it up again so you can copy and paste just like that and I can change this to food now with food we want to take away so there really isn't an int subtract because we can just send a negative to get the same thing so we're just going to take five away from the food and we can paste again because it's still in our clipboard and we'll take let's take away three from health just so we can see that it's different and we don't need this every frame this would only be if we were making a game where every single frame rate uh, you know every frame it draws and I'm sure you've heard that in game design 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second that it would do this calculation we only want to do it when we press the button one time so let's run it again and we can click this now like the big for a dollar if I go over here in our variables we can actually watch these um, so let's pick one of them food for example see it there it's at 95 now and as I hit this see it goes to 90 and 85 and so on and you can actually see them out here in the inspector as well but uh, what we haven't done yet is we haven't wired it up to our text variables and uh, the the labels on the screen we haven't wired our variables so they will update on the screen yet now fortunately see we already have a method over here for doing that it's right here it's taking these variables and already updating our text so we can come in here and add an event we just right click and say add transition just like this and say finished and what this means is when we're done with all this we're gonna have to fire off this finish event and notice it brings up this little red error we can click on it down here too and it says transition is missing a target state and what this means is that we're not telling where this should go well all we have to do is just click and hold so I'm clicking my left mouse button and holding and just dragging over and moving it over to update UI so as soon as it's done here it's gonna see this finished event here and it knows that we're done with everything and then it's gonna go over and update our UI so just like that when we hit play and we hit big we see our money going up we see our health and food going down and the foods going down faster because we set up our variables that way or our actions that way and just like that we have a somewhat of a working game now one of the things we could add that we don't see here is the day going up so let's go ahead and add that in fact I would encourage you now to pause the video and try and add the command in here to increment the day okay hopefully you pause the video and you tried to do this yourself but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now for you and, and show you how to do it so we'll just copy this make sure we have it again paste the actions we just change our day here today our variable here I'm sorry today and just say one and so we're just gonna be adding one on today each time and now when we run and play the game you can see our money is going up, our day is incrementing, and our health and food is going down. So we're just getting really started here, but you can see how quick it is uh, to get something up and going in Playmaker and without any coding at all. We've really got kind of the basic framework of how these uh, life simulator games are made. And of course, we're going to have a lot more complexity to add, but even with what you've learned here, you could begin building these buttons out and that's what we're going to do in the next lecture is just start uh, adding uh, features in for these buttons and we'll see how we can make it so that uh, we can make our buttons reusable and so that you're not going to have to be hard coding these values in here like you can see now when this state runs we're having to say we're adding one on we're adding negative five on we're adding negative three and if we had to create events and actions for all the various combinations uh, of 
things we would eat, things we would buy, uh, transportation, um, the education, all those kinds of things that we would add to the game, we'd end up with a really, really crazy state machine. Um, you could actually build it out that way, but in the next lecture, we're going to see how to do it uh, in, a, in a little bit more responsible way.